What is going on everybody? This is Eric here with No Lost Production and today we are going to do a more updated version of the how to use Streamlabs OBS without an Elgato. The reason we're doing an updated video is because, well, last video I kind of left up the game and y'all couldn't see what I was clicking one and two. I still get a lot of questions a year later in this video. And so I think it's better to do an updated video because people said that there's been updates, there's been changes. And so here we go. First thing first, it's a black screen. What you're looking at is OBS, which means we're looking at nothing. Um, so basically, there's a little plus sign up here. You'll see it here in a moment. We're going to go ahead and add in a screen here for y'all to look at while I talk. So. Um, basically what I did was I hit this little plus symbol right here and there's two options. You have window capture and you have display capture. Don't touch window capture. Window capture sucks. And I'll show you why it sucks. Um, basically we can add a source, add a window capture and you can do capture cur uh, cursor, which then leaves, of course, your cursor. That's a no go. But if you decide that you like window capture, which some people do, not for me. Um, then of course you can stretch it to the thing and whatnot, but basically this is window capture in a nutshell. It looks just like display capture, but it's not. And some people prefer window capture when they're doing gaming on PC versus what they're doing whatnot. Um, personally, I've always done display capture. I feel like it has a higher, <clears throat> excuse me, I feel like it has a higher uh, refresh rate and I feel like it has a higher uh, visual quality but that just might be me I might be crazy I don't know so anyways we're gonna go ahead and get rid of you for now so anyways next thing we're gonna do is add a camera now this is not necessary a lot of people don't have cameras now if you're using your laptop you can use your laptop camera it might be labeled under HD webcam it might be a label under you know uh, or webcam HD, HP webcam, uh, Dell webcam, you catch my drift. So basically, I'm going to add an existing. Now, you're not going to have existing. You're going to go to add a new source, and then you've got to click from there what you're wanting. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and just move myself right down right here, right here. And here we go. So next setup we're going to do is audio. Well, we don't know where the audio is going to come from until we actually get to the next step which is setting up your PS4 remote play. Now, I've already downloaded this. You can go to the link down below in the description to download it, or you can just type in PS4 remote play and go from there. Same with Streamlabs. My Streamlabs OBS uh, sponsor link will be down below. You can download from that. It helps out the channel tremendously. But if not, I understand. So anyways, I've already downloaded PS4 remote play. Uh, the two options is Mac or Windows. So, sorry, Linux users, I didn't see that. Before you get all excited and jump both feet in, make sure to go to settings. Because when you first go to your settings, they are actually set like this. I already changed mine over, but I'm showing you how the standard settings are. At 540p. If you want to stream at 540p, go for it, man. Or, girl, I ain't knocking you. But, it ain't for me. So, personally, I want 720p. Or I want 1080p. Personally, I can do everything in 1080p. I can. Note, if you try to do 1080p through PS4 Remote Play, it is very demanding on your upload. I have a 25 upload. And basically, to stream Remote Play at 1080p in my game and everything else like that, I'm using about 15 upload uh, to keep a steady connection. So, a very high... Connection now, it will it work on lower connections? Yes, but it throughout the stream you might notice some jittering or some buffering issues. So there is that. Now frame rate standard or high, you're not going to really notice a difference. But if, if you're going to stream at 1080p, might as well go with fr fr uh, high frame rate, right? So after you set all those settings up, make sure that you're signed in. That's also important. I've already done all my password information and everything like that, so there's no reason to do it again. So we're going to go ahead and go hit start. 
Now it's going to look for your PS4. Now, if you can't find your PS4, go into your PS4 settings, which I will show you here real quick. Uh, go into your PS4 settings, and you're going to go down to remote play. Gameplay recording pause. I wonder if that means if y'all can't see it. I don't know. We'll find out. Anyways, um, there's the enable remote play. You've got to make sure that's check marked. All right, I just have this going for the sound in the background, which is what we're about to go over now. Now, before I go any further, um, a lot of people are like, oh, well, you can't use remote play to play games. Well, if you got this hooked up to your laptop or you got this hooked up to your MacBook or you got this hooked up to whatever, um, basically, then you're running two screen setup. You can still play off your TV. In this so here's my TV showing Mad Max and here is my desktop showing Mad Max I don't use this this is just here for the string purposes to see everything and hear everything I'm doing what's that you don't hear any sound because we're about to go over that so basically we're going to minimize this keep it in the background and what you're gonna want to do now as I as I already have mine set up I'm gonna show you how to now you can hear the game you can hear it coming from your headphones you can the stream can hear it they can hear the party everybody's happy but how did I get that well basically what you're gonna do is there's this little cog up here that says setting wood all right so there's a little setting up here with a cog basically you're going to go to audio from audio you're going to have a plethora of options here desktop audio one two mic options out the game so basically i have desktop audio disabled because that's for my pc headset over here so when i'm not using my pc i keep that disabled uh or it disables itself when it's off anyways uh second option it's gonna there mainly until you get this all set up it's going to be under default I would not recommend leaving that that way if something changes by accident or an update is going to change all your settings this makes this a lot easier especially if it resets your settings and you go back and click on what you have. so i use real tech audio the second output i have two real tech audios but i use the second output because i use the first output for something so uh some people are going to want to use the nvidia some people use the amd i use the real tech the options whatever works for you wherever you get your sound coming out of i say go for it uh if you have a usb microphone like the blue yeti like this you make sure to click it on here and everything pops up down here uh for to look at so that as you can see my levels and everything down here moving all right so under output so this is what's kind of important so your pc you can have a potato pc and it's not going to matter so my settings are nowhere near what you need I run something completely different so basically if you are using your PC to stream to use this basically your PS4 is still doing the work that's why you don't need a good PC your PS4 is still doing the work so for somebody that might have a you know GTX what is it, a 920 you know you can still use that i'm trying to think of one that was lower or 10 you know if you had a 1050 ti that's not really that low end i mean it is and it isn't anyways um that'd be your invect encoder but say you have a laptop that doesn't have an invect encoder or an amd encoder what do you use use software x264 this uses your your um cpu so when it's using your cpu it's not going to have to worry about really any kind of lag or anything like that because you're not you're not enforcing the CPU to do heavy encoding. It's just saying, hey, hey, look, this thing already did the encoding for me. I just got to send it out. And that's what that's going to do. Whereas for when you have an Elgato run through your PC, your PS4 is no longer doing the leg work. It's now running on this and this and sending out. So a whole different mess. So basically, you're going to want X264. For you unless you have a NVEC encoder or AMD encoder that can send out a signal without um, any really hassle so you don't need a really good PC you don't even need a mild PC for this you can I've seen it done with a potato PC I have I've seen it so moving on all right bitrate um, I would leave that around the 25 
to 5,000 rating, depending. If you're doing 720p, leave it at 2,500. Um, me, I do 8,000, but that's something completely different. Um, these, you can only have to worry, really worry about. These are more play around with and find something that you like. Uh, but remember, um, you might not see too much of a difference since your PS4 is still doing all the legwork. Uh, GPUs, you ain't got to worry about all that unless you're running a multi-GPU section. Then you're going to choose either GPU 1 or GPU 2, or in this case, GPU 0. It goes 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. But um, anyways, so here's where it's more important is the base canvas resolution and the output resolution. If you want to stream at 1920p or 1080p, then this is where all the magic happens. Now, as you see, I'm recording. So I can't change this, but you can change your base canvas to uh, 1920 by 1080 p for you, but to output it, you want to change that to 720 if you're streaming at 720. That way you don't get any of that stretch look or any of that grit look. It actually comes out buttery smooth. And that's basically it here. The main thing I wanted to go over was that audio. That's where everybody's going to hear you from. So whether it's your real tech or if it's your NVIDIA or if it's your AMD, whatever. Or you can even go through your monitor, but I wouldn't recommend that for the simple fact that you're going to have to kind of turn this down or run a separate headset over there away from everything else so it doesn't get picked up. Yada, flipping yaw. So anyways, um, that's basically it. So how do we add the overlays and how do we add the GIFs? Well, let's bring that up right now. So basically, you're going to go to hit this little plus new sign. Now, for a sub counter, like you see, um, you're going to want to hit browser source. Now this is important because you're going to want to keep this up to date live. You're not going to want to change it every few minutes, every time somebody subs or whatever. So you go to browser source and you're going to hit add new browser source. Now it's going to ask for an HTTP or HTTP or a web address. So go to social blade or go to live sub count or whoever you want to use and grab it. You'll, you'll punch in the, or you can copy and paste the web browser into there. And you'll come up with something like this. Now, mine pops up as already with a green screen behind it and whatnot. So basically what the way to do that is through filters and you go through there and you change your color correction and crop and then you go to your chroma key and you change your chroma key. And when you get done, it's a lot of tinkering. It's about 10, 15, 20 minute process for uh, somebody that don't know what they're doing, maybe a five minute process for somebody that's kind of learned the process. So don't get frustrated with this. This is kind of a learning experience. So you can crop it down, move it around wherever you want. But now you want a um, you want a theme. You want you want overlays. Now you can make your own in GIMP and add it into image like this. And you go to add new source. It'll open up your PC or your laptop or your Mac, and you go wherever you had it saved at, and bada bing, bada boom. Then you can just kind of move everything around to there and make it fit in the box how you want. Or option number two, you can go up here to themes. Now, I don't know if this is popping up for y'all, um, but if it's not, just there's a side to it with themes. And it's got webcam boxes for you and all the other stuff. So I don't know if that popped up for y'all, but it will actually already have borders and everything made up for y'all. And however you want to set it up so basically um that's about it if you want to add anything else like you gotta have the stuff saved to your pc so if you want a, uh, a gif double click if you want to add a gif that so we want to add rick here if you want to add a gif that's how you do it and then you can just hide it now the good thing about Streamlabs is it has an app so then you can download the app and sync it. And then when you're on your phone or when you're playing the game and stuff, instead of having like an Elgato stream deck, I know a lot of people like, oh man, that's so cool. I can just do all this. It's expensive. Well, you can use your phone and just hit the button that you want. And when you hit it, then this will pop up. Now I don't have my phone linked to it right now. So that's why you probably just click it. Anyways, so that'll work like that. Now notice that there, there will be a delay from the phone to Streamlabs. So when, you, when you're wanting something, hit it about a second early because it takes about that long for it to kick over. But I mean, it's not the end of the world. So yeah, now when it comes to the, the test widgets and all that stuff, when so, say somebody subscribes, 
well, all that's not going to pop up unless you actually already have it automatic or you can go to and add a browser source. And they have all these options up here. And you don't even need to go through all that way either. There's another way to do this thanks to Streamlabs. Uh, now that's OBS style. So if you want to do that, you have to go to browser source and you have to fix all that. With Streamlabs, they tell you what's essential that you can add to your alert boxes and everything else like that. So then when somebody subscribes, Wub wham now you have a gift that welcomes somebody or if they and you have to kind of add one for each one so say uh well that's your alert box they used to have it more down so if so somebody sponsors if you're that far enough into uh the youtube where you can people sponsor or they somebody donates so as you can see the donate's not correct i have to fix that i don't have a donation link on mine so i don't use that but the super chat uh is what's available on mine and as you can see so that pops up like that and you can test it to make sure everything works that's what these are for and it doesn't mess anything up now to have all the the stuff down here moving and everything else like that that's called your event list and your uh if people are donating to you and you want their name up on the thing you can actually go up to uh it's called donation ticker on here and bam so there is the donation ticker and you can kind of widen it out to where you want in your borders or if you want it to go across the whole screen that works too make it as big as wide whatever whatever you want to do for your people it's your stream these are your people do what makes you happy and makes them happy every streamer is different don't go off of what everybody else does this is just kind of a a show of what i do and then of course the event list that shows people that actually up for that day or whatnot and I keep mine up there now you can with the alt button crop that down so it doesn't all pop up there and then blah bam there it is right there and that's how that looks so with that being said remember this plus sign is your friend this is everything for widgets for your stream and then anything that they don't have like gifts and stuff like that you have to add over here this is for gifts and stuff like this this is for like sub counters and stuff um i've never used the image slideshow the display capture is what i use but you could use window capture if that's what you prefer but display capture just seems to work better for me i, I have less problems out of display capture than i do window capture Game capture is something completely different. That's if you're streaming your PC games and you want to do a game capture. I still don't use that for when I do PC. I just do display capture. Um, I don't use the audio input capture. Um, this is for for people that are going to play music on their stream and stuff like that. If that's your thing. Go for it. Uh, you got, of course, you got your text GDIs and all that stuff. So there's all kinds of different stuff you can add on here. Your media sources, your color sources. Video capture devices, as you can see, that's my camera, but it's also my Elgato. But if you don't have an Elgato, then you ain't got to worry about that. So, yeah, that is it. We kind of went over everything as an updated video to show y'all. The main thing I really wanted to go over was sound and how to add all this stuff here. Because um, last time I did it, it wasn't there. I accidentally left up the stream. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. It does help out tremendously. Sub button. Uh, of course, you can join the AOP family, ask questions. I still answer video. I still answer questions from the old video, but I will also be answering questions from this video. You guys have a wonderful day and wonderful night, and Godspeed.